Day 71 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. The smashed leaf provides so many nutrients that the sandbox has a strong smell again. Let's check under the microscope. It should be a rotifer egg, and it is ready to hatch. Whenever there is organic debris, there are vorticella. Oligocata again, a type of aquatic worm. You can clearly see what is inside its intestine. And you can see it poop. Different sizes of microorganisms are swimming together. The largest one is paramecium, a type of common ciliate. Time to add more stuff. Mucus. Before that, let's check it under the microscope. The small groups of cells at the center are white blood cells. These large cells are nasal epithelial cells. To see them clearly, we can stain them. Since I just used safranin to stain, everything appears red to pink. You can see a lot of rod-shaped bacteria here, arranged in a parallel pattern. They are actually Corynebacterium, a type of common commensal gram-positive bacteria living inside our respiratory tract. This is an epithelial cell with bacteria on it, and a small neutrophil, a type of white blood cell, and flour. Are we starting to bake it now? Let us see what grows inside tomorrow. See you. Day 72 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. I'm afraid I have to reject suggestions that include animals like fishes, as that would be considered animal abuse. Let's check under the microscope. I found an amoeba that really looks like a neuron. It moves so slowly that I need to use time-lapse to observe its motion. A dying vorticella. You can clearly see it is bleeding. A paramecium hiding inside organic debris. Never belittle a stentor. It can eat prey as big as a rotifer. Someone suggested I try using a gram-negative stain. Let's do it with saffron stain. Many plant cells and debris are stained red. Obviously, most microorganisms die and become stained red. I can still find some survivors, but they remain unstained or only partially stained. When I added more stain, it died. That's all for today. From now on, I will only perform one task during weekends to allow myself some rest time. Let us see what grows inside tomorrow. Day 73 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope. I saw some funny comments saying, I reject animal cruelty, but still kill microorganisms. Did anyone seriously think killing microorganisms counts as animal cruelty? Anyway, let's check under the microscope. I found lots of microorganisms that look like flipping coins. You can see many small ones swimming in the background. They all look like flipping coins too. Do you see the twisting one in the center? That one is called paranema. It is a really interesting microorganism. When it moves, it stretches out. But when it stops, it twists itself into a ball. Look at the long flagellum pointing forward. It uses that to sense if there are any prey in front of it. Remember the rotifer egg that hatched a few days ago? This is what it looks like now. Time to add more stuff. Tick, tack. I have not eaten these since I was a kid. Doritos. Let's share some with the microbes. Now I'm going to split the sandbox into two parts. One will always stay in the light, and the other will always stay in the dark. I will add the same stuff to both. We will check the dark one next week. Let us see what grows inside tomorrow. See you. Day 74 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. A microbial sandbox spillage just happened. I spent some time cleaning the area. I hope it will not cause any serious problems. Anyway, let's take a look under the microscope. I found a peanut-shaped organism that is just slightly larger than a bacterium. It swims by twisting, which looks interesting. These two seem to have something connecting them together, almost like one is walking the other like a dog. I found a paranema again. Do you think it looks like someone playing with a cat teaser? Here's a bacterial colony surrounding a piece of organic matter. It looks crowded. One of you asked me to test UV light treatment. I exposed the sample for 15 minutes. It seems the UV light did not kill much. I still found many vorticella. Maybe the UV could not penetrate the glass of the tube. However, I only found a few moving bacteria. Maybe I effectively killed the bacteria. I will try again tomorrow with the lid open. Since I already added flour, I think it will not hurt to add more yeast. I also swabbed the bottom of a toothbrush holder. There might be some black mold. Let us see what grows inside tomorrow. See you. Day 75 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. Due to the action of yeasts, there are many foams on the surface of the sandbox. Let's take a look under the microscope. Yeast cells occupy most of the space, with only a few other microorganisms swimming around. I saw many dormant paramecium cells scattered everywhere. It seems the environment was too harsh for them. Even so, a few active paramecia are still present. Maybe yeast fermentation produced too many toxic byproducts, which killed off other microorganisms. I probably shouldn't have added so much yeast. This time, I opened the cap of the tube before exposing it to UV light. But there are still many microorganisms. Since this tube was prepared before the yeasts were added, it seems to contain more life than the current sandbox. Look here. A group of paramecia gathered around a piece of organic debris covered in mold hyphae. Maybe they were enjoying a buffet. I need to use this to help save the sandbox. Let's add more stuff. Vegetable? Maybe there are diverse microorganisms living on cauliflower. McDonald's ketchup. It provides both vitamins and color to the sandbox. Let's see what grows inside tomorrow. See you. Day 76 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. The action of yeasts is so fast, 
It becomes turbid again, even though I diluted it yesterday. Let's check it under the microscope. This is the microorganism with the weirdest shape I have ever seen. Is it just dysplastic, or is it a strange species? Yeasts keep proliferating by budding. Do you see a tumor-like structure developing from a yeast cell? It is a bud that will eventually become an individual cell. Vorticellas eat a lot of yeast cells. This one even obtained enough energy to divide. Let's add stuff. An ant. First, let's see how it looks under the microscope. Look how horrific it is under the microscope. It looks like an alien with a sharp mouth part. I found something interesting. Something is moving on its leg. I think it should be a mite. Some mite species live on insects by sucking their body fluid as food. Let's put them into the sandbox. Beer. Let's mix a part of the sandbox with beer to check the outcome tomorrow. Maple syrup. It's rich in sugar, which provides food sources for all the microorganisms. Let's see what grows inside tomorrow. See you. Day 77 of growing our microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and checking it under the microscope every day. As usual, we observe the sandbox under the microscope first. Then we add new stuff into it. I can smell it even without opening it. I found a bacteria ball. Sorry to disturb trypophobic people. Actually, bacterial balls are everywhere. It should be one of the materials we added yesterday which thrive bacteria. Yeast cells are also everywhere. I can still see some other microorganisms like this perinema, but not a lot. It is the best time to do bacterial culture. Remember we mixed part of the sandbox with some beer yesterday? Let's check it. It seems bacteria are still thriving normally. Okay, safe to add beer into the sandbox. Glass, weird suggestion. Can microbes absorb silicon from it? I even crushed the glass in a microscopic level. Apple cider vinegar. I have to beware not to add too much, as it is acidic. That's all for today. See you tomorrow. Day 78 of creating a microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and observing it under the microscope. Today is a bit rushed, so I will go straight into the microscopy part. The sandbox has become a sea of bacteria, and it smells very strong. Even in this condition, other microorganisms are still living inside, mainly vorticella and paramecium. These two seem to be the most resistant to extreme environments. I will dilute the mixture further. Earlier, I went out to collect many natural materials, including rainwater, pond water, still water, mud, decaying leaves, and so on. I'm not listing all the comments today. In the end, I combined everything into a jar. Under the microscope, I found a microorganism that looked confused. It seemed to have lost its way. It was a dinoflagellate, which is a type of motile algae. I also found an algae shaped like a puzzle. It is called pediastrum, and this type of algae has many different forms. There was another unknown algae that looked perfectly symmetrical. It looked very cool. I added all of them into the sandbox. The best news today is that I finally found a water bear in a moss sample. It is very active and looks really cute. I hope it can become my pet. So I collected more moss from the same location. I will try my best to culture them, and I will keep you updated. That is all for today. See you tomorrow. Day 79 of creating a microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and observing it under the microscope every day. I am sorry I spent so much time handling the water bear samples today, so let's have a quick look at the sandbox. There are more algae in the sandbox now, with pediastrum as the dominant one. There are also many other kinds of algae. Here's something that looks like a shell. Actually, it is a type of rotifer. Even rotifers have many species, and they each have different morphologies. A live vorticella and a dead one. I noticed that vorticella are not very active today. Most of them are moving slowly or are already dead. Let's add some new materials. A rotten banana. We are adding nutrients along with bacteria and mold. Honey. For those who are curious, let's take a look at it under the microscope. Honey is actually full of crystals. It looks cool as they come in many different shapes. Now I use polarized light to observe it. It creates an awesome picture with various colors of light being deflected. By the way, I'm trying different methods to culture water bears. I would love to hear from you if any of you have experience with it. That is all for today. See you tomorrow. Day 80 of creating a microbial sandbox by adding random stuff and observing it under the microscope every day. I just skipped one day and the hope jar has already become a mess again. It is turbid and smelly, and it makes me suffocate. Organic material is starting to decay. Let's put it under the microscope. Here's a spinning microorganism. It looks a bit like vorticella, but it is not. Now I am confident to say that vorticella and paramecium are the fastest dividing ciliates. The whole sandbox is full of them now. I also found some bean-shaped ciliates living inside decaying organic matter. The amount of bacteria is terrifying. They are covering the entire surface of the organic debris. Now let's add some new materials. Peanut. It adds some fat for the microorganisms. Fresh tomato. They no longer have to eat artificial tomato sauce. Urine. I want to see if I am healthy. Under the microscope, I can only see a few epithelial cells. No white blood cells, no bacteria. In healthy urine, there are usually few or no blood cells or bacteria. I hope my urine provides nitrogen to support microbial growth. That is all for today. See you tomorrow.